from China. Will it be a time to remember? It is a new world record. The reality is when you get to a lot of startups and a lot of businesses, there is understandably a degree of cynicism as to whether this company is going to make it, whether they're going to be around. And some of those people who are quite cynical about it at the start are now saying, because they, they said it to me directly, you know, I wanted to wait and see if you're going to be around or not in two years. Yeah, this is my little, my little corner. So you want to see the handsets? They really only have two components to the outside of them which is the button and the LED light. So to switch them on, I hold the button down for three seconds and you'll see the lights come on. So these are now ready to go. Go! 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 12-4, 8-9 and 6-4 there, Jess. 18-6. So first of all, we have pressure sensors that sit in here and that pressure sensor enables us to measure exactly how much force or power those hands are pushing through the water. When you're ready, drop and go straight away. Separately, inside these units is an accelerometer, a gyroscope and a magnetometer. And what that enables us to do is not only measure how much power is being pushed through the water, but also the speed that the hand is moving. It enables us to plot the position of the hand through the stroke and critically, the gyroscope measures what we call the angle of attack. And that angle of attack tells us which way that hand is facing as it's going through the different stages of the stroke. And then the really beautiful thing is how we present that data to the athlete and to the coach in a very simple and easily understandable fashion. And where this gets really powerful is not only can we show you what it looks like now, What's your stroke rate? Just a whisker under 50, 48. But when you make those changes, you get almost instantaneous visibility as to the outcome of those changes. Excuse me, coach. Yes. And therefore, if you can supply that athlete and that coach with objective data that tells you how beneficial it is or otherwise, then that helps you decide what changes to make and how to make those changes. That's the inward fall, that's the inward rotation, that's the outward rotation of possible. What Speedo did to swimming in 1998 with the implementation of their suits that then got banned in 2008, 2010, where they owned every world record in the water. Right? They, they literally owned every world record, they, were, they smashed it. Um, we're gonna see our technology do that to swimming. Swim tech is the next big moment in swimming. We think by the time LA 2028 rolls around, most of the leading swimmers are gonna be basing their training around this. I think there is a little bit of history and status quo to break through, which um, is definitely, we are seeing that very visibly. The, the idea of bringing this innovation and bringing this technology to a sport and cracking that sport open I really mean that, cracking it open, because you're talking about having this old-fashioned culture that's deeply ingrained and being able to say, guess what, guys? There's a whole new world out here. And it's like everything. You're going to get the early adopters are going to come in first and they're going to experience some great successes and then others will follow and catch up. We set? Will, set? All good. OK. Yeah. You go on Will's instructions. Okay. All right, so same thing, double tap to start flashing. We can go on whenever you're ready on the 10. Going through this trial and error, this tweaking, uh, is a new level of coaching, which is assisted by the handsets, 
that I think will be responsible for many personal bests. Technology is starting to get involved and you see someone like Pan use the technology and fully truly believe in it and trust in it. Everyone wants to jump on board. Three, two, one. The handsets can show you here's what you can do to improve that technique and to refine it so that it's more efficient. All inefficiencies are because of bad habits. Any information that we get, you know, any data that we get that says you're an athlete's inefficient here, there, or wherever, we just talk to them and we say, look, this is, this is an area that we need to really focus on and improve on. So when you're swimming, whether it's fast or easy or in between, you need to be thinking about this. That is the primary way in which EO Swim Better handsets assist. They put real numbers to biomechanical flaws. So it's just a little bit shallower than the yeah, rock? Yeah, yeah, I mean, she's like locked in the whole time. Yeah. Wow, the last lap was the best one. Yeah, yeah. People say if we do what we always did, we get what we always got. And that's the thing, as swimmers, as, swimmers, as coaches in a, in a high performance environment, we want to get better, we want to improve. So we need to find new pathways to get better. Instead of repeating ourselves, we need to embrace the new technology, embrace new findings and learn from them and then act on them. We captured the data on today, your three 200s. And let's look at the first and last 200 to see how it works out. It's what? Not today compared to last year. Really? But last Seven, time, two, six. Last time I saw, remember we were the Ash in Queensland? Yeah. You had a big differential between your left and your right? Yeah. Now it's way balanced. Really? It's way balanced. I like that. All the hard work's paying off. It's no use to the developing athlete progressing at the same rate as the world record. They're going to stay equally behind it. They actually have to progress quicker than the world record in order to catch it and pass it. In the case of Paige Madden, that was one of the things that they did. We had Paige swim race simulations with the handsets with Division I male distance swimmers wearing fins on her right and left. And I fed them splits. I fed the, fed the boys splits and we asked Paige to respond as if it was the race that mattered. As the numbers show, um, she thought she was going faster, but the reality is for a brief period of time she went faster, but it broke her stroke, it broke her efficiency. We explained to her this tendency, and I think the results speak for themselves. After being a medalist in Tokyo, she went 19 seconds faster in at 800 metres. For an athlete who's already an Olympic medalist, improving by two seconds per 100 metres in that 14 month period of using the handsets is pretty ridiculous. I remember looking at myself in the mirror before my race, knowing that I had done everything I possibly could have. 25, 30 years ago, an IMU system would weigh one to two kilos. Now, you have this device which has all that power, capacity, and it's built into a very small system that can easily slip onto a hand and freely measure a swimmer swimming up and down the pool. Force field, consistency, stroke path, all of this information. And I don't think I've yet met a swim coach who couldn't, and a swimmer, who couldn't make sense out of the data in front of them. If it's not comfortable for a swimmer, and this is one of the key risks that we were worried about early in the, pro in the project, is that the swimmers would say, I like to feel water when I'm swimming through the, you know, through the pool. And if I've got something on my hand, it's gonna stop my ability to, to, to actually be able to feel the water. And that's actually one of the reasons that the, the device was designed to fit in the palm of your hand, because often people are feeling the, the water actually between their fingers. It's one of those things that when you when you go and look at the device after it's all done, it all looks simple, it all looks obvious, it all looks you know, quite basic and, and, and the like. But actually going through the journey to, to go from you know, an idea and having all of the options available to you and then whittling those down into come up with that very simple form and, and very simple device at the end is not obvious. When we first started the journey, I had no idea that these things would do what they do. I knew they'd provide us information but I didn't know to what degree, and I didn't know how powerful. The guy who did, and you're gonna be speaking to him later today, Neil. Um, Neil's a fucking genius. Uh, well, I've got a background in engineering and um, a PhD in physics, and that is a, my PhD in physics was experimental physics. Uh, I used to be a competitive swimmer, 
I think just I had enough insight to what it felt like to be the swimmer in the pool at the time that the recording is being taken to know what is the information I would want to see. And I think it's an inevitable wave once people see what's there, then as I say, the money ball moment will arrive for the sport. So many people are too worried about getting the volume in because if you're just doing 2,000 more yards, not technically sound, what's the point? Effort matters, of course, like in pushing yourself forward, but you also want to be as efficient as possible. Being able to utilize the technology, it, it just gives you more to think about in the pool as well. So yeah, very important. I think the typical coach would be shocked to see that some of the predictions that we make at the onset of a first test is in seconds rather than fractions of a second. It's constantly evolving and constantly progressing and constantly changing and constantly getting better and we've got even stuff at play at the moment that's going to simplify it further. The AI aspects of this that we're working on will in essence make it a virtual coach for swimmers as well. Even if you're swimming on your own, this product's going to actually do the analysis of the charts and the metrics and it'll tell you where you can improve, it'll connect to videos to show you what that should look like. EO is Latin for progress. You know, it, it's basically the essence of the organisation. Being part of the team that's creating the first real quantifiable data that you can get um, at the level of resolution that we're providing, it's, it's pretty, pretty game changing. This is about looking for areas that we can make a difference, areas that we're not scared to go in and change norms and shake things up. I'd say we're probably only representing 40% of the data that we have available to us. We're still figuring out ways of giving people better visualizations of some of the information that we have. We just can't present it to them in, in a meaningful way yet. You've got to crawl before you walk, before you run, before you sprint. And it's, again, it's, it's evolution, it's progress, it's EO. It is, it's, we, 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 we're going through this journey and we're unlocking these things as we go. And we provide them back and it's, it's fascinating.